Chapter 1 I've always loved CSGO. Playing as the terrorist was always so much fun, so I decided to become one in real life. It was finally time for my first actual mission as well. I had to go through some training. I ended up carrying everyone. I guess all those CSGO hours finally paid off. I just boarded the plane that would take us to the location that we were told to bomb. Where was that exactly? Bethesda Studios. Taking my first glance around the plane, I saw who I could only assume would be my teammates. I approached a short looking man. He was holding what looked to be a Popeye's chicken sandwich. Oh my gosh, hi! My name's Emmanuel. You must be Austin. I've heard so much about you. Like, you're literally the best with the infamous op. I'm so, so, so happy to make your acquaintance. If you ever need to buy from someone, come talk to me. Okay. I slowly back away from him. I ended up bumping into someone from my lack of attention. Hey! Watch it! I almost dropped my iPad! And right at the part where Kirito's about to kiss Asuna for the first time! An immature boy gives me a death glance, his expression quickly shifting to one of shock. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I was just so invested in this anime right now. It's sort of making me a different person. My name is Kalen. You must be Austin? I heard me was practically yelling your name. Why is everyone so weird? This is starting to make me a little bit uncomfortable. I try to find a free seat to sit down on, hoping that I could just ignore everybody for the rest of the flight. I don't really do well with my AK when I'm distracted beforehand. The plane was small, but it seemed that there was one more seat open. Hey! Watch it! That's for my nades! Another person began to yell at me before I even got to sit down. I pivot to see an intimidating looking man staring down at me. I'm sorry. I whisper quietly, being too scared to say anything else. He ignores me, picking up a flashbang. It's okay, my lovely. Mom, I don't is here. Deciding that standing would be more comfortable, I moved towards the back of the plane. There was only a red head back there. He wore several badges on his trench coat, all of them resembling CSGO yearly service medals. Who was this man? As if reading my mind, he responds. Name's Dylan. I'm the commander of this year group. He jabs a finger towards the chaos at the front of the plane. I had a more mature squad before, but they all died. I gave him a fearful look. Who is this guy? And why is he the one leading us? Yup, told them to rush in and they all got shot down. One flashbang and they were all dead. Ended up having to kill the enemies by myself. They reassigned me later to the rookies, so they don't care if they die. Yikes. Guess I really am gonna have to carry, huh? I turn around to leave, instead to be faced with a red-looking tomato. Hi Austin, can you show me what crosshair you use? I can't aim very well, but I'm not new to this, but I'm not good. Please help me. What? This is getting weirder and weirder by the second. If this was a CSGO game, I would have abandoned it as soon as I met the first guy. Well, I may as well introduce myself to the last member of the squad, who was an extremely short girl. Hi, I'm Austin. Wow, such a formal greeting. My name's Kira, and I'm kinda new to this, but I'm not bad, I swear. I'm actually pretty good, just give me some dualies or a Galil and I'll be able to kill some people. Uh, okay. Why is she telling me this? I mean, at least I know what kind of gun she uses now. Bad ones. Finally not having to worry about bumping into a new scary face, I take another glance around the plane. Everyone was so loud that I was able to hear every conversation happening. Jet was seated next to Evan and his nades. Who's that you're texting? Your girlfriend? No! It's more of an experiment. Dylan was at the back. He was staring at the ground in intense concentration. I heard him talking to himself. Courage, we all flash tunnels and rush in. <sighs> Old habits die hard, I guess. Kalen was yelling about his anime. Kira was talking to Muez. Hey Muez, guess what? What? Chapter 2. A couple hours had passed now, and the plane finally took off. Kalen fell asleep. Well, actually, he dropped his iPad on his face and knocked himself out while watching anime. Evan had fallen asleep with his fingers about to pull the pin of the nade. I heard him mumble a, Die, counter-terrorist scum. I'm a little bit terrified right now. Kira was still awake, browsing the Lemon Cloud forums on her phone. Every time I glanced around, she would tab out really quick. Mew was kept getting out of his seat to grab chocolate cake from the fridge. The chief. I suddenly jolt awake. A loud gush of wind starts surrounding me. Loose screws and any non-grounded objects began flying around. It felt like I was being jump-scared for the first time in five nights at Freddy's. 
How's I supposed to know I was supposed to save power? Anyways, I take a proper glance of what was happening. Kira, Jet, and Kalen grabbed onto Evan to make sure they weren't flung out of the plane. News grabbed onto the fridge. I was luckily strapped into my seat. I had a front view of all the chaos that was happening in front of me. I look to my right. I see a gaping hole in the side of the plane. Something must have hit us. Or something had gone horribly wrong. I see a flash of green and blue as we begin to rapidly lose altitude. We quickly grow closer and closer to the ground. Then suddenly... Silence. Then everything went black. I regain consciousness. My vision is blurred to the point where everything is in triples, then doubles, and then finally I could see everything clearly again. My ears were ringing terribly. I can't tell if it was because of my gaming tinnitus or because, you know, the plane crash. I could barely breathe. Something was crushing my chest. Some form of debris from the plane. There's barely any light. I couldn't make out where I was. I hear a voice. Hello? Is everything okay? It sounded just like Dylan. I heard Kalen respond. No! Nothing is okay! We just crashed! Oh. Well, anyways, we need to find the others. <gasps> Look, there's the fridge! Miwes, are you in there? Dylan yelled out. Yeah. Kira, are you alive? Barely. She responded. Are you hurt? Not physically pensive. Okay, who are we missing? Jet, Jet, where are you? Your mom's house! Jet cried from a distance. White shirt, cash up, stains big like sauce. Jet has schizophrenia. Okay, he's fine. Wait, Austin, the new guy, where is he? I began squirming, trying to lift myself out of the debris. Evan lets out a screaming roar. He's over there! Ah! Heard Evan approaching me, running towards me actually, full sprint. He moves the debris off of me and lifts me out, cradling me like a baby. I can't tell if it was the lack of oxygen to my brain, but from under this lighting, Evan looks kind of sexy. Suddenly, my, be my brain began to form synapses. I squirm out of his grasp. Ugh! Get off of me! I say repulsed. Everybody regroups into a circle. Is the pilot okay? Dylan asks. Everybody turns towards him. We, we had a the pilot! pilot. Turn around, I see the big gaping hole where the cockpit used to be. Well, we had a pilot. Fuck. Dylan said under his breath. He had the only radio. Okay. Evan responded. I'll go looking around to see if there's any way we can contact base. Everybody grabbed any remaining supplies that they could from the crash. There wasn't much, however my beautiful Atheris op was still intact. Factory knew and everything. Wait, there was a scratch. No, the plane must have made it minimal wear. Well, at least it's still stat track. I turned it around. The stat track meter was busted. Shit. I see Evan glance around at the sky. He points towards the sun setting. The sun sets in the west. Bethesda Studios is also that direction. But we can't go anywhere in this state right now. We'll head east. There has to be some form of civilization that way. We began to follow Evan's instructions. It was clear that we wouldn't survive if we stayed here. We had to find some form of city. Kira's a bit behind though. I walk up to her. Kira, is everything okay? She glances up at me. I'm just trying to find the bomb. The bomb? Yeah, the bomb. The whole reason why we're going to Bethesda in the first place. Yeah, 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 I get it. But don't you think that the bomb was the thing that blew up the plane? No, I was the bomb carrier, and I'm still alive. It's obviously not the same bomb. Ah, here it is. She exclaimed, picking up the bomb. We quickly catch up to the group. Our surroundings were a whole lot of nothing. A lot of hills with an occasional tree from time to time. But the grass was cut. I don't think we're in the middle of nowhere. Muse was in the front of the group, kicking a rock, then running up to it and kicking it again. Evan runs in front of Muse and picks up the rock. Rock connaissance! He throws it forward. Everyone was in their own conversations. I was keeping to myself. Suddenly, I hear Dylan let out a yell. Muse, why'd you stop? I glanced up. Muse pointed out a huge greenhouse that was on top of a hill. There were some flashy white frames. That's why. Should we go up and knock? Jed asked. I mean, it's the only house in miles. Kalen agrees. Who should do it? Jet replied. Actually, rock, paper, scissors me right now, okay? Ready? No, don't rock, paper, scissors. Just go do it. 
Kalen says angrily. Jet crosses his arms. Well, I'm not gonna do it unless you rock, paper, scissors me right now. Dylan intervenes. Guys, stop fighting. I'll go in. Suddenly, the door jolts open. A bright sheet of light casts before us, lighting up the dark sky. Before it hit us, we had all hidden behind bushes. Jet slammed his head into the sand like an ostrich. The only thing I could see was a tall, shadowy figure looming over, being closely followed by a shorter, similarly shadowy figure. You couldn't say who they are due to the light that was behind them. I quickly glanced everyone in the eyes, trying to decide what we should do next. I swear, man, I heard something out here. Oh, stop being a baby, Rigby. Shut up, Mordecai. I told you there's something out here. Ow! The taller figure then punches the smaller one on the shoulder. Whatever, dude. I'm out of here. Chapter 3. Jack quickly takes his head out of the sand, letting in a huge gasp of air. <gasps> I could breathe in there! I almost saw heaven! I saw my mom, guys! I saw my mom! He began sobbing on the ground. <laughs> How pathetic. Mordecai, I told you I saw something. Rigby screams. <gasps> what the heck? Who are you? Mordecai follows. Jet stared at them. I'm your mom. <laughs> he said with a toothy smile. Not cool, man. Not cool. Mordecai says, crossing his arms. Everybody else comes out of their hiding spots, joining Jet in the predicament. Dylan speaks up. Look, look, listen. Our plane crashed back there. We're lost. Our pilot is dead. Can we, like, crash in your house until we find a radio to call base? Rigby stares at Dylan. Are you guys in the military? Something like that. Rigby and Mordecai look at each other. Sure, I mean, this isn't the weirdest thing that happened to us before. We all enter the house, sitting down in a nice little living room. I don't think we're allowed to go anywhere else, though. Kira and Mordecai are having a deep conversation, at least from what I can see. Suddenly, a weird gumball machine man dude enters the living room. If I see you guys slacking off, you're fired! Who are you people? He says, staring all of us down. We're, uh, in the military. Jet says. Why is the military in the park living room? Gumball dude man asks. The plane crashed. We're just vibing here, you know? Kalen responds. Well, you can't stay here! Milk. Cereal. Combine. Mordecai then stands up. The coffee shop! Do you want to go? He exclaims, looking at Kira. He quickly glances around, noticing that everybody else is staring at him. Uh, your friends can come too if they want. Not a bad idea. Okay, let's go. Dylan exclaims. Cut to the coffee shop, be awesome! Everyone is crowded around a table, waiting for at least some kind of service. Everyone was in their own conversation. Kira was sitting next to me, Mordecai in front of her. He was staring at her the whole time, even when they weren't engaged in a conversation. Um, I hear Kira say under her breath. Why is he staring at me so fucking much? Fucking bird. He's kind of hot, though. Everyone else was just talking about politics. I didn't really care too much. I was just looking down at the menu, wanting to order. I just wanted to order one singular french fry. Ha ha, you're so funny, Kira. I hear Mordecai say. I just sat down. I haven't said anything. <laughs> Kira responds. So, uh, do you, uh, come down here often? What an awkward conversation I was listening to. No, not really. Planes don't really crash that often. So, how did it crash anyways, hmm? I don't actually know, because the bomb that I have didn't blow up. You have a bomb? No, I am- anyways, it couldn't have been that reason. And now that I think about it, the angle of the explosion looked like it was caused by an inside force. It was indenting outward. So, dude, what if you guys blow it up? No, it couldn't have been. There was no other explosives. The only other person that had explosives was... Evan. I quickly stared at Evan. He was eating burgers in one bite. He kept yelling at the waiters asking when his Oreo milkshake would be coming. Mordecai and Kira were staring at him too. I guess he was pretty suspicious. Anyways, the conversation between Mordecai and Kira continues on. They began to talk about why Minecraft 1.12.2 is better than 1.14. Then, about FNAF timelines. Then, purple guy theories. I eventually tuned them out and played with pencils. This is what I drew. Don't you think it's pretty cute? Suddenly, Dylan stood up. He had ketchup all over his face. I am literally about to shit myself. I'll be right back. Dylan, leaving, inspired Mordecai to ask Kira. Hey, do you want to, like, uh, leave this place? Kira agrees. They begin to head towards the exit. 
Rigby grabs Mordecai by the fucking tail and says, Hey, bud, where are you going? Mordecai replies, Oh, you know, we're just gonna walk around to him. Here is New Year. I want to show her the sights. Let's meet back up at the park later, okay? They then leave. Rigby asks me, Austin, you're the top frigger, right? I don't trust Mordecai walking around town by himself. Can you, like, spy on them for me? Okay. I mean, I guess I have nothing else to do. My singular fr fry never came. I got up and began following them, making sure to keep my distance. Chapter 4 Mordecai and Kira entered the arcade. It was called Slick Pussy. Mordecai kept trying to hold her hand the whole time, but Kira kept itching her nose whenever he tried to do it. I think she noticed. He then turned towards her and stares her dead in the eyes. Kira laughs nervously. <laughs> Yeah, a, a little bit. Morty then begins to laugh hysterically. <laughs> He's not very good at flirting. So anyways... Kira says, switching the subject. What exactly are we doing here? Well, this is the arcade. We're here to game, obviously. Mordecai says, his attention somewhere else. Oh, look! Over here! Point and click Zom. I love this game. Zombie shooter? There's so many of them. They're kind of boring. No, thank you. Mordecai looks defeated. Uh, yeah, I agree. Kira ignores him, looking behind the stupid bird. Oh look, I love this game! She exclaims, running towards the machine. What game is it? The Sims 4! Mordecai follows her. Dude, you love The Sims 4? I love The Sims 4! Wow! Oh god, I hate The Sims. If it's not League of Legends, I won't play it. If any game isn't League of Legends, I wouldn't even give it a chance. Falling behind them, I hide behind an arcade machine, watching them from a distance. Oh my god, it even has all the DLC! Here, I'm gonna be Chunky Chicken. Mordecai intervenes. No, no, no. Here, let's grab one for Rigby. Then we'll kill him. Oh, good idea. I love killing people in The Sims. Mordecai and Kira then go on to make a character for Rigby. They make a short little boy with the traits of a hothead. Hates children! Angry. And lazy. They then go on to destroy all the items in the house and buy a bunch of useless shit to make him poor. Okay, Rigby is gonna go to work now at the construction site. His rent is a million right now. Good luck paying that off, stupid bastard! Ha ha ha! I'm kinda scared, not gonna lie. They're friends, right? I watch them send Rigby to work from afar. They seem to be giggling. What could they be planning? They keep glancing at each other. Those two really seem to be enjoying ma making Rigby's virtual life a living hell. Well, I don't know, must be a Sims thing. I just play League of Legends all day. Did you know? That League of Legends has over a hundred champions. It's free to play. Crazy, right? Oh my god, Rigby's dead! I zoned out for a second thinking about League of Legends and how awesome it is. Then when I glanced over, and Rigby had been impaled from the back. It must have been a construction accident or something. I don't really know. Mordecai was on the ground wheezing about his dead friend. <laughs> Rigby is fucking dead! He yelled. He wipes his tears from his eyes. Oh, anyways, that was fun. Okay, let's head back home now. Fucking psychopath. They walk back outside, me falling close behind. Oh, dude, how long are we in there for? Benson is gonna kill me if we aren't back in, like, two minutes! I step behind them. No, it's fine. We were supposed to meet back at the park anyways. They both jump and turn around to face me. <laughs> what the fuck? How long were you following us? Uh, I was just bored. Just wanted to see what you guys were doing. Oh, hi, Austin. Kira spoke up. Wanna walk with us? It's been a long day. I just wanna go to Bethesda and plant this bomb. Mordecai looks at Kira in shock. Bomb? Drop to five. Kira covers her mouth instantly. She had accidentally just outed their plans to Mordecai. I whip out my deagle, pointing it at Mordecai. Nobody should fucking know about our plans. Kira intervenes, running in front of my gun. No, no. It was my fault. I should have never said that. I'm so confused right now. What is going on? Mordecai asks. Kira, get out of the way. I don't want to get a collateral. It might ruin my KD. Mordecai stares at me. Crap. Dinner. What? I decide to let him go. Don't ask why. I'm not gonna explain. Fine. I'll let you go. But I'm gonna keep a close eye on you. I still don't know what's going on. He exclaims. I'll explain later. Kira says. We arrive back at the park house. Everyone was already sitting in the living room. We enter the room. Look who finally showed up. Benson says, but we ignore him because we don't want to get caught up in this bullshit. Anyways, what's that smell? There's a weird aroma in the air, but I couldn't quite put my finger but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. It kinda smells like cooking. Evan then steps out with bundles of food for everyone. Dylan exclaims. Evan, you cook? Yeah, kinda. The food at the cafe kinda sucked. 
All right, Jet, here's your Fortnite burger. Mewis, here's your Whopper I made with grass outside. Kalen, here's your cereal and milk. Except gluten-free. Evan gets interrupted by Rigby, who is tugging at his pants. Dude, dude, what am I gonna get? He asks impatiently. Without saying a word, Evan pulls out a dog bowl and pours dog food into it. Here you go, Evan's grandma. There's only dog food. Hope this can fill you up. He then pats Rigby on the head and scratches his belly. Rigby begins to purr before yelling at Evan. Get off of me! I didn't even know I could purr. There's something weird about you, man. You're changing me. Rigby then picks up the dog bowl in disappointment, but eats it anyway. And after taking a bite, he looks disgusted. Wait, is he smiling? He's going in for seconds, thirds, fourths! Oh my god, he's just eating dog food! Now he's on all fours. Anyways... Rigby turns around, looking at Mordecai. Dude, I cannot take you seriously when you have dog food in between your teeth. Mordecai interrupts. Rigby then sucks in between his teeth before continuing. Anyways, I was browsing the web because these weirdos were kind of freaking me out. Like that weird buff guy over there kept petting me. He kept calling me Evan's grandma. Ugh. The two began to head upstairs. Evan handed me a bowl of dog food as well. That's when I decided to leave the room and follow Mordecai and Rigby. Right before I was about to ascend the stairs, Emmons spoke up. Oh yeah! Don't take too long. We're gonna head out soon. We were able to contact the base. I nod, continuing up the stairs. I followed them upstairs into a room with a computer. They sat down and turned on the computer. Alright dude, so basically I found this hilarious video. It's a guy and his phone is on the ceiling fan, right? Then he goes, I love my daddy. Funny you should have ever seen. Okay, so here it- Dude, you okay? Mordecai asks. Yeah, but like- this isn't the tab that I left on. Benson probably just forgot to log out. No, it can't be Benson. It's an email going to Bethesda support at Bethesda.com. Wait, what? Bethesda? How could this be possible? I mean, we're the ones supposed to be blowing them up. Unless. Mordecai interrupts my thoughts. Who's sending it? Says it's. Suddenly the room darkens. I see Rigby run towards the window. Why did it get so dark? I ditch my hiding spot and run to the window as well, looking up at what could have caused the sun darkness. Is that... the Bethesda logo? I hear a voice from outside. It was Muscle Man. Hey guys! You wouldn't believe it, guess what? He was never able to finish his sentence. A bright flash of light illuminated everything around me. Muscle Man was engulfed by the inferno caused by the blast. Didn't stand a fucking chance. Man. Suddenly, I see the sizzling inferno inch closer and closer to us by the second. It was a Fallout 76 nuke. I had to warn the others. I descend the stairs as fast as I possibly could. I yell out to the others in the living room. Guys, we have to get out of here now! We have to find shelter or some- Suddenly, the back side of my body heated up, quickly taken over by the blast. Everything went black again. Sir, there are no signs of life! We have seemed to have eradicated them all! Damn it! It just works! Todd Howard spoke, slavely watching from a screen. My face began twitching under the rubble. A beam of light was shining on my face. How much time had passed since the first blast? Where is everyone? I try to get up, but I feel a sharp pain on my leg. I slowly look down. There was a beam that had impaled my leg. The blood looked like it had dried hours ago. I looked down at my hands. They were also covered in blood. I must have tried to remove the beam, but passed out from the pain. Hello, hello. Is anybody alive? Dylan calls out. I see him reach into his pocket and pull out his phone. It looks as if he was about to call somebody. I'm over here! I call out. Dylan quickly runs over to me. Oh, Austin. Thank goodness you're alive. I thought I was all on my own. Yeah, but I've seen better days. Can you help me here? I kind of, like, can't walk. Yeah, of course, of course. E emoji. That's kind of nasty. Dylan began moving the beam left and right, trying to wiggle it out of place. I scream in pain while maintaining eye contact to get the message across. He got it. Dylan looks left and right before making the decision to call it for Evan, or anybody that was nearby. Evan! You there? No response. Dylan reaches into his pocket, pulling out a protein bar. He then snaps in half. Evan rises from the ground. Hello? Evan, come here! Come break the steel bar! We can't take it out or Austin will lose even more blood. Evan walks over and effortlessly breaks the bar. He looks dazed. Guess he's still lightheaded from the blast. He then immediately passes out, falling over. I then get up, leaning on Dylan's shoulder for support. We gotta find everyone else. Dylan says. Just our luck. We hear a loud scream echo throughout the blast site. Bouncing around the cavern, we hear a voice. Kira's voice. No! 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 
I hop onto Dylan's back, Dylan running towards the scream. The scream had led us to an even deeper part of the hole. I see Kira hovering over Mordecai's limp body. She turns around, looking up at us, tears in her eyes. Is she dead? Dylan muttered, before being rudely cut off. His pinky is broken! He's bleeding out! He's gonna die! Kira squealed in a high-pitched voice. She's barely crying at this point. She's just making high-pitched noises. I didn't even feel bad for, for her, just scared. Dylan gently sets me down, covering his ears while walking towards Kira. He pushes her out of the way, obviously annoyed by her. He grabs Mordecai's hand and snaps his finger back into place. Mordecai quickly opens his eyes, instantly making eye contact with Dylan without breaking it. Oh. He muttered. Dylan and I leave them to whatever they were doing and decide to look for everyone else. It didn't take us long to find Jet and Kalen, snuggling up to each other. Dylan kicks Jet in the shoulder before yelling, STOP BEING GAY! Jet snaps awake, realizing what he was doing. He then lets out a scream. I am a man! Kalen too snaps awake. <laughs> You're not my queen, Asana! Ignoring what was happening, I began to count. We got Kira, Mordecai, Evan, Jet, Kalen, and Dylan. Where's Muez? Muez! I yell out. I hear a muffled sound come from where Evan was, except it wasn't Evan. I yell out to hear the muttering again. Muez! The muttering continued, as if it was responding to me. Dylan runs over, turning Evan over. We see Muez crushed by Evan's muscle. He's he quickly jumps up. Oh my god, thank you guys so much. You guys are my heroes. I was beginning to see white lights. I love you all so much. Thank you for being part of my squad. Fuck you. Dylan said, flicking Muse's eye before yelling. Lazy eye. Mordecai and Kira approached us, the group finally being brought back together. Where's Rigby? Mordecai questioned. We all then split up, staying close to one another, though not to lose each other. I stay close with Mordecai, who seems the most worried out of everyone. Rigby! <laughs> Everybody yelled out. No response. What if he's under the rubble? He must be. It doesn't seem he can hear us. Mordecai grows more worried each second that goes by. Suddenly, a faint sound can be heard from a distance. Mordecai quickly silences everyone. Listen! The sound seemed to be coming from the left. Without a sound, we all ran to the left, hoping for the best. We came across a dead end, the sun shining upon the spot. Here we see nothing but a beam, similar to the one that impaled me is protruding out of the ground, surrounded by rubble. Mordecai called out, Red Bean? A response was heard from under the beam. Almost instinctively, Mordecai runs to the pile of rubble, quickly tearing through the mess. Gashes and cuts begin to form on his arms as he tries to dig deeper and deeper into the rubble. Nobody aided him. It was as if we knew exactly what was going on. Mordecai kept digging and digging until suddenly, he stopped. He began breathing heavily without much rhythm. Then, he began wiping away his tears. He was crying. He put his hand to the earth one last time, unveiling Rigby's face. Evan then steps forward, putting his hand on Mordecai's shoulder. Evan's grandma is dead! No! Evan's grandma! Mordecai then joins his screaming. Rigby! His voice began to crack. They tilt my head a little bit to the right, noticing the beam that we saw earlier was impaling Rigby through the chest. Rigby began to slowly lift up his head, turning it towards Mordecai, desperately using any amount of energy he had left to look him in the eyes one last time. He was attempting to form his mouth into words, before muttering, Mordecai, the sender of the email is... Ugh. His eyes grow heavy, as his current of life begins to close. Quite quickly at that, Rigby was dead. Bruh. Mordecai says, before breaking down in a sob. This is the most human I ever saw Mordecai, mainly because he's a bird. Anyways... Rigby the raccoon was dead. Mordecai stands up, wiping his face. He makes eye contact with Dylan, his eyes still glossy from crying, a serious, stern look on his face. So what's this I hear about bombing Bethesda? 